We're all good. I already ate. I took my pills. I got my water. And we're going to watch some YouTube videos like I've been doing, react to some YouTube, and then we're going to continue on in the Nuzlocke run uh, that I'm doing in Alpha Sapphire. So that's the plan for today. Hey, before we get any further in the video, I just wanted to take a moment and ask that you like the video and subscribe already if you haven't, as it really is one of the best ways you can help the channel out. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitch so you can catch me live and join us in the chat and follow me on TikTok for more random content and clips. Links in the description. That's all. Thanks for your time. Back to the video. Um, first up, we're going to get filled in by old Charlie Boy um, on the Netflix updates. I don't know about you guys, but I, I pay for Netflix. I have Netflix. Um, I think most people do nowadays. Um, I even... Um, a while back, some years back, when the Best Buy near me was having a Amazon finally beat the fuck out of us and we lost sale, I was able to pick up a 4K TV, pretty cheap, um, like really on sale. So I did that because I, I had never had a 4K anything. Um, it's, it's still my only 4K thing. Uh, and uh, I was like, this will be cool for like the PS... Or Pro and Netflix and then I realized that you actually have to get a specific plan on Netflix just to be able to stream in 4k and it comes with like it's like their primo premium plan so it has everything you can stream on unlimited crap it's so annoying that they bar it to that point um, and that was already kind of shitty so I was already paying like 14 15 dollars a month just to be able to enjoy my 4k TV um, which at this point I've probably spent more just on the upgrade to 4K streaming throughout the months than I did on the TV originally. That's kind of fucked to think. But yeah, um, just to enjoy that, I upgraded to that. And now with their price increases, it looks like that's going to jump to $20 a month, which is rough. Um, I, I'm kind of considering canceling my subscription or at the very least like downgrading it because like i don't even watch netflix that often um so people have already been calling them out for making like pretty mid-tier content for like a while now and i think that's somewhat agreeable although i don't know that that's entirely their fault there has been a global pandemic for like the past going on three years so uh that certainly hindered production for everyone and ability to do things the, the way they were being done um we had to like redefine some things. So I don't know if that's entirely their fault, but still, uh, there is that. And what else? Oh yeah. They're looking into using a add on or some kind of application with their application to, uh, track global IP addresses, um, when they connect to the website. Uh, so they can, they'll take note of your public IP address um when you first set up your account and which uh public IP addresses are being primarily um used to try and identify the owner of the account and ban other IPs using the same account which has raised a lot of questions for divorced parents um I grew up in divorce households not really in the age of streaming but uh you know it would certainly be a problem where uh you know divorced parents were tweeting things like so does my child need to have a login for my house and then a login for her dad's house and does she need to sign out anytime she switches houses just to make sure the other house doesn't get banned this doesn't really seem to make sense which is already a really good point how are they going to distinguish between situations like that happening and you know not cool password sharing which they've tweeted about on valentine's day oh what was it five years ago Saying that, like, oh yeah, sharing passwords is love, and now they've completely reversed stance. What's going on? Okay. I don't know what my dog. But uh, yeah, so there's that, uh, and that will also prevent the use of VPNs, so people won't be able to look at Netflix in other countries, which sucks. It's not something I do um, ever really, but uh, I think I've played around with it a little a while back, but I don't know. It just, it wasn't, nothing was particularly grabbing me and I was just ignorant to like all of the areas I was looking. So I, I didn't like have a specific show to hunt down. I feel like that's more of what you would use that service for. Um, I'm sorry about my dog just writhing in the background. She's just living her best life. Yeah. Okay. 
So, uh, yeah, we're going to get filled in by old Charlie boy here. Uh, see what he has to say, what's what's going on there. And, uh, yeah. Are you specifically doing it when I'm talking? It's kind of mean. I'm delivering news that I'm sure you already know. Netflix is struggling. I'm sure you've seen the numbers. Year to date, their stock is down over 60%. But more specifically, over the last week, they've really fallen off a cliff. Just Holy got shit. fucking kicked right down that, that giant well in 300. They went down 37% in a week. So Holy a lot of people shit. are asking the question, is Netflix dying? And that stock graph is looking like a heartbeat monitor about the flat line. It's not looking good. That shit's looking like Blockbuster back in the day. And a lot of people are wondering, well, what could be the cause for this incredible decline so rapidly? And naturally, everyone's turning- I didn't even realize this was going to be more of a business analysis of Netflix, but I think obviously what would- what, their PR has gone to shit. Um, they, they have, like, walked back previous policies of theirs um, that were very pro-user very recently. And, you know, Netflix is a service that entirely relies on its users for everything. So, yeah, if you, yeah, I mean, you can't give the people you're trying to service the shortest end of the stick and expect them to still be stoked about it after you've already been giving them better for a long time and then being like, actually, we're giving you too much. What, when will that ever work? Why, like, wouldn't you be pissed off? I feel like every, yeah, like, you set the precedent, dude to me to answer these questions since i am the preeminent expert on all things shitty movie and tv show related i have a genuine passion for horrible media whether that be horrible games Man, movies. that's true i love paris cinema and so does he and i also do like him uh and bo burnham honestly i love watching like horrible content like small channels like bizarre weird things um I even have a video on this playlist that's just like a, an hour long of bizarre YouTube. I'm just scared to click on it because I honest to God don't know what the fuck will pop up. Um, <laughs> and that's the thing with weird YouTube. But that's, I, I miss old YouTube had this like, this feel of just utter chaos. Like it was, it was just so many people doing so many different things. There was no standards there was no expectations no commercialism it was just pure internet in its like most raw form and it was crazy i love that about the site and i that's what initially made me fall in love it's a very different place today um much more structured um and i say that while contributing to it but and i don't think that's necessarily wrong i think it is a natural progression honestly but uh I do miss and am nostalgic for that Wild Wild West YouTube um, in regard to, like, the, you know, nothing offensive or, like, crazy or anything like that. Obviously, all that stuff was awful, and, like, cleaning that up was awesome, uh, which, you know, policies and regulations do kind of bring in structure and regulation – or structure and uh, standards, so, uh, you know. Natural progression, like I was saying. These music shows, whatever. I just love watching and consuming the worst of the worst. Things that turn other people's stomachs, make them puke, cry, and question the existence of God. Yeah. I get a big smile on my face and a wet spot in my trousers. I, 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 I just really enjoy it. A week. So when people saw this happening to Netflix, they were wondering my opinion on it. Is it because all of the terrible shows and movies Netflix keeps funding? And in my expert opinion, and it pains me to do this, I'm going to have to diagnose Netflix with shitty content disease, but it doesn't mean it's terminal yet. Netflix has been funding basically anything made by someone with a pulse. And even that seems to be spotty. It feels like they're funding scripts written by fucking AI. They have a catalog of actual about? dog shit shovelware. Like, you remember DOSBox ROMs back in the early internet where it was just actual 30 second games that were just being uploaded to the, the ROM sites? that were almost unplayable. That's Netflix right now. They're just this giant cum dumpster of almost unwatchable movies and shows. And it's things nobody Jesus. is asking for, but they're putting a lot of money into making them for some reason. Like they'll drop like 50 new originals on like a single weekend be like, hey, new on Netflix. Netflix presents the poop that took a pee. And then they'll be scratching their heads like- <laughs> That's the fucking, the isn't that the sequel to the Scrody McBurger Balls in South Park? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Holy shit. 
Yo, Charlie watches South Park. We all know. Oh, man, that's fucking funny. But, like, yeah, I do feel like uh, there are a lot of Netflix specials that I pay no attention to, but I also feel like that was always true, and I haven't really been watching Netflix. Y'all already know I've been watching Doctor Who. Like, I live on HBO, YouTube TV, and Twitch, um, and YouTube. Like, the, these are the streaming services I use. Sprinkle in some Hulu. That's about it. Oh, that's not true. I do have some Peacock TV um, every now and then for The Office or Parks and Rec or something. And then Paramount Plus for Halo and Survivor. Um, I know I have a lot of streaming services, but some of those I get just for having YouTube TV. That's how that works because um, I have a cable provider. So doesn't it's not as bad as it seems, but it is still pretty bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to stop talking about it now. <laughs> God, why is no one watching that one? We put a lot of money into that production. That's so weird. Why is no one watching this? It just shows that no one would ever even think to watch that Netflix, Netflix is funding. Now, I want to make it clear. I don't think bad content is solely responsible for the decline of Netflix right no now way, in terms dude. of their stock price and all of that. I definitely think it contributes because as things get more expensive, because things are absolutely getting more expensive in our world, the first thing that people are going to cut is a service like Netflix. You know, Netflix is just a luxury to have, and it's an expensive one. It's $25 a month. So as the cost of living goes up, people are, aren't going to be able to justify subscribing to Netflix. Did he say $25 a month? Justify subscribing to Netflix a month. So as the cost of Netflix, you know, Netflix is just a luxury to have, and it's an expensive one. It's $25 a month. 25? So as the cost of living goes up, people are, aren't going to be able to justify subscribing to Netflix anymore when they're not even putting out content that they want to watch in the first place. And especially True. with so much competition right now, Hulu, HBO Max is kind of killing it. Yeah. Uh, even Crunchyroll uh, slash Funimation to a certain degree since anime is so big on streaming and Netflix it, is doing yeah. a horrible job with like their anime BRB. catalog with like JoJo's Part 6. God rest its soul. I know everyone's upset about that. Netflix cannot get anything right. Fucking JoJo's Part 6 has been divided up into like part releases where they released 12 episodes a few months back and they still haven't released the next set of episodes for some inexplicable fucking reason. And they have the audacity to hype up, hey, good news, JoJo's Part 6, Part 2 might come out in 2022. Woo hee Getting sidetracked, but competition, Jesus. you know, Crunchyroll, Funimation, Disney Plus. Disney Plus kind of slapping them around right now since they took all of like the Marvel shows and everything. Which That's true, but I don't even have Disney Plus. I'm not a big fan of Disney and I don't really like the idea of supporting Disney, but that's just my personal take. But obviously, if you have children, you have no option. Literally, no option now. People are just going to idly binge forever on that service. So the thing is, Netflix just has a lot to compete with now, and the content they keep funding isn't shit that people want to watch. So their originals don't keep them there, and Netflix has really mm -hmm. been bled dry when it comes to shows that people love, like beloved classics. Yeah, streaming All services. I mean, obviously, The Office and Parks and Rec shows like that, they get fought over constantly. They're always moving around, and like it's literally, I don't know, I assume it's just like a game of when the contract ends and can you jump on it quick enough, almost like a fucking patent or a copyright or some shit like that. All of those have gone to other streaming platforms. So Netflix is left with just like the worst of the worst. So I definitely think that does contribute, you know, just not having any of those classic shows anymore for people to just want to watch on Netflix. Those have all gone elsewhere while also not providing any new originals and then still increasing the monthly subscription price is just a yeah. recipe for disaster. They've been increasing the price, but decreasing the quality of content on the service. That's it's just really ass point. backwards right now. I just think they're not really sure what to fund, so they just fund everything anyway, even if it's like a student project by a nine-year-old or some shit like that, and then hope that one of them sticks. So they'll get uh, the occasional banger like Squid Game or Arcane, but for every Squid Game and Arcane, there were a thousand Bruise Brothers and other shows that no one has ever I don't heard even of. know. So yeah, the I don't even know what Bruise Brothers is. I also didn't even finish Squid Game. Um, I don't know. I because obviously it got spoiled for me because there is any time the entire internet runs away with the Netflix show, it's impossible for it to not just be spoiled. Um, do you need to go outside? Why? Why are you doing this to me? She's just coming in here and writhing constantly. Um, but yeah, no, uh, I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying. Look what you've done, Marcy. Look what you've done.
Live with it. Content hasn't been amazing, and that's surely contributed to a lot of people deciding, like, I can't really justify paying $20 a month for Netflix anymore. I'll just cancel it and stick yeah. with one of the other services. Literally talking I, about I, that. I do think that's a contributing factor. And another thing I want to just say, and I don't know how much of an effect this has, but I really feel like this whole binge model that Netflix is still just living and dying on, which is where they dump an entire season of a show all at once, is just so fucking dumb. I, the binge model was cool in the early days where it's like, wow, I get to watch my favorite show that I remember when I was a kid all at once. I don't have... Yeah, no, uh, binging's not super healthy. I remember there was like a brief period where Netflix had like uh, achievements. A brief period where Netflix had achievements on the Xbox 360, I think. Uh, and it didn't last long because they realized pretty quickly, um, that's fucked. Uh, fucked. Totally fucked. So I don't think they have them anymore. Um, God, I hope not. But uh, binging's not healthy, obviously. And I think most most people are much more of a fan of, if not day after air, um, as soon as you can after it airs, like maybe a week or something. It depends, you know, obviously. Like HBO Max with uh, Doctor Who, they, since it's BBC content and technically a government-owned, you know, show, they, and, you know, from not from a uh, not from hbo and from a different country also uh they only get the rights for episodes and seasons about six months after the season completes airing um and that's just the contract they have worked out whereas if you're in the uk and you have iplayer the bbc iplayer um you can watch them like pretty much right away all you want uh now if you have youtube tv or dvr or something like that you're obviously free to record them and you can watch them that way but like you you cannot really find them um on streaming services which is a little lame but that's just how it works and uh i mean i don't know it is a government funded show uh so like obviously they have to recuperate some of that since they spend quite a bit on it um but it also does pull in quite a bit of money tourists and a bunch of other stuff so it's a give and take it's a give and take do you need to go outside you want to go outside okay yeah that's her shaking her ears means she's i'm gonna take her outside real quick okay Yeah, I'm just playing. I don't. Anyway, back to this video. Dog has pooped. We are all good. I have to like wait week by week or even like a new show. Like, wow, all of it's out all at once. But now the novelty, I think, is completely worn off. I much prefer a weekly release of a show. And on Netflix, Arcane proved it could work. It's so much more fun and engaging to watch a show week by week because then Arcane is that. OK, I didn't know they were doing that week by week, but Arcane is that uh, League of Legends show. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, okay. Magic technology. Isn't this? Yeah, League of Legends. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, my friend was actually telling me that show's really good. Um, he's starting a D and D campaign in the League of Legends universe, so he's been like watching the show to kind of beef up on league of legends lore and stuff because he played league of legends just really have uh so but yeah he was telling me the show's actually really well made while i was telling him that the halo show was really Everyone's at the exact same pace. You get to discuss it with friends, family, even online, because everyone is at the exact same pace. So you can True. talk about what might happen next, come up with fan theories and speculate, and it's just a lot. Actually, yeah, that's why Game of Thrones was such a fucking phenomena. More fun to engage with the content and that way, as opposed to the binge discipline. model where they drop all 12 episodes all at once, and then you'll have some people call out work the next day in order to finish it all in one night, and then you can never really talk about it with anyone because everyone's at different places in the content. Example, Stranger Things Season 3. Third season of Stranger Things was very good, but they dropped all the episodes all at once, so some people finished it in one day, some people in one week. So everyone was at different places in the show and no one ever really talked about it. When Stranger Things dropped, there was a lot of hype. And then within like two, maybe three days, no one was talking about Stranger Things season three. It just faded from everyone's memory. Hmm. Whereas something like Arcane, which was on Netflix, true. people were talking about the entire run. Every single episode, every drop was trending on Twitter with people talking about it. It just gets people more invested in it when you're able to discuss it with other people. It just makes it more fun. I just think that whole binge model is really counterintuitive to engagement as well as keeping people on Netflix. I think it's really fucking stupid to be honest, like if you're bleeding, you're bleeding out. 
So you take your best shows and release them all at once. People finish them in one day, and then what's their incentive to stay on there? Yeah, exactly. They'll have to wait they another six months when you accidentally find another good show to fund. You know, like, why would they continue to pay for it that long? Whereas when it comes to a weekly release, Netflix does get lucky. They have another huge show like Squid Game, and they release it week by week. And then they get some people to stay longer because they're invested in that show. Like, it all just makes more sense to just do weekly releases, even just from a business standpoint. But yes, I do agree that the quality of the Netflix content hasn't been great. They've been pumping out a lot of net shits recently, and a lot of people are probably just not bothering to re-up a subscription. But Netflix is cracking down in what I believe to be the wrong area. They're just blaming everyone for password sharing, which is a legitimate problem from a, you know, a business standpoint. Yeah, problem. I, I don't know if you can classify it as a problem after you encouraged it. Uh, no, don't get me wrong. A lot of people share passwords. I myself am getting Netflix from Tiana's account. You know, everyone shares the passwords to their Netflix. So there is a lot of unpaying Netflix viewers. So that is a lot of money left on the table for them, but it's such a tricky problem for them to navigate because if you really come down with an iron fist, just flop your meat on the table and like, villainize anyone that's ever shared a password, it's gonna make it a headache to continue using the platform. So most people just won't even bother, and since there's so many alternatives, they'll just go somewhere else. So them cracking down on password sharing is gonna be a really tight rope to walk. I know they've tossed around the idea of doing like a really cheap Netflix, Netflix subscription that has ads with it. For people that don't wanna pay the full $20 but still wanna watch the content, they could do a cheap alternative. But Yeah, but that I have to assume that means no 4K also because you have to pay for the absolute best k like package for 4k for whatever reason um so i don't know getting some ads there maybe that's a decent solution i don't really know it's not like an unheard of one i know other services offer that i just don't know how successful they are in that area but again, cracking down on password sharing, like, throw these people in the slammer, they shared their password with too many people, I want them fucking arrested, and like, making it really like a cutthroat policy is only going to serve to damage Netflix further. Yeah, so they have to really come users. up with like a consumer-friendly option to get people who are sharing passwords to instead pay a little bit to continue watching the content, and I don't know how the fuck they're gonna pull off that balancing act. But I do think perhaps the best solution for hemorrhaging so many subscribers is just by offering better content. This is quite literally like that Twitter meme of make better content or I'm unsubscribing. That is actually <laughs> happen happening to Netflix right now. The price of everything in the world is getting more expensive. Netflix is expensive and most- Yeah, dude, honestly, food has been crazy lately and I love, I love seeing everyone blame like the ongoing conflict this is obviously an ironic statement in the ukraine because it's i don't know we've been also seeing that like uh corporations are seeing record profits for first time many of them first time in like 50 60 years and also the worst inflation in like 40 50 years and like these are not coincidences you know they're exploiting um a concept because they know they can pump inflate those numbers up higher than they actually need to be just for the sake of people being like well there is some reason to this right now so like they're you know give them an inch they took a mile that's what happened and that's what always happens um so like obviously with like shit like food and all that housing's already constantly getting more expensive but with all things like that getting more expensive progressively um, luxury is the first things to get cut and Netflix also hurting their users while making their prices more expensive and pumping out bad content. Yeah, that is just a recipe for stock plummet. This will be really interesting. This will be really interesting to see what happens to Netflix. Um, especially because Netflix was like the game starter, I feel like, um, in terms of like the modern streaming area. So, uh, seeing them take such a big hit, especially to their stock is kind of crazy kind of crazy i bet a hell of people are gonna buy netflix stock now i don't think you should but uh i also don't really i'm not like massively educated so you shouldn't take stock buying advice from me but uh i mean i'm fucking not people aren't gonna want to spend 20 dollars a month for shit where they might get one good show twice a year that's just not worth the cost 
So the best thing they can do is just improve with what they're putting on the platform. And another thing that not a lot of people have mentioned is Netflix's numbers were heavily inflated because of COVID. When COVID hit, everyone went to subscribing to streaming platforms because everyone was locked at home watching shows and movies and shit like that. But now that everyone's getting back into like a normal routine in the real world, all those people are starting to cancel these subscriptions. So the numbers just got like really inflated. So maybe this is just equalizing and it's totally normal. Can't really say for sure. But what I can say for sure is Netflix has so much garbage on it that no one really wants to watch while only ever providing a couple of good shows a quarter. So th that I think is a, a big problem for them and the competition's getting fierce. So I just wanted to talk about this a little bit because it's an interesting topic, I think. I always find it very fascinating when there's a company that's too big to fail starting Failing. to fail. Yeah. I don't think Netflix is in any danger of closing its doors anytime soon. They still yeah. have, like, 220 million active. Yeah, no. All, like, I don't think they'll, like, completely go away. But, like, they might go through, I don't know, I mean... There might be some turnover. There might be uh, walkbacks of statements or new policies implemented. Maybe, uh, I don't know. Like, they ideally, they'll react in some capacity to this. ...subscribers. So they are still very much in the game. It's just a matter of them having a bit of a stumble here. And by a bit of a stumble, I mean they're fucking spiraling down a dirty toilet. 65% year-to-date loss in the stock is kind of rough but they're still fine overall. I don't think they're in any danger of dying anytime soon. So I just wanted to talk about it. That's about it. See ya. Thanks for watching, guys. Follow me on Twitch to join us live. Like and subscribe, and I will catch you later.